I had these brioches so many times in my life and they're wonderful, they're delicious, but I always had to work really hard on getting them. And by working really hard, I mean stealing them. Because in Morocco they give all the good stuff to the guests and as a kid you always had to wait. But there is one glorious moment when your parents walk the guest to the door and it's open hunting season. Everything is sitting there, no supervision, croissants, brioches, sweets. You just go in and you steal as much as possible, go up to the roof and just eat it all. Your parents get furious, but it's fine. You're in a food coma, you don't care. Today we're gonna make them, they're gonna be delicious, but they're not as delicious as if you stole them as a kid. Baking recipes are quite precise, so I highly suggest picking up one of these electronic scales. If you have one, you don't have to worry about whether the recipe is in grams or in ounces. For this recipe, we need 435 grams or 15.3 ounces of all-purpose flour, 40 grams or 1.4 ounces of granulated sugar, 220 ml or 7.4 fluid ounces of whole milk. A quick note on yeast, I'm using instant yeast, which does not need activation. If you are using active dry yeast, you will need to activate it before you add it. I'll leave a link to an article that explains the difference between them. So, 10 grams or 0.35 ounces of instant yeast. You people are lucky I'm not a surgeon. I literally cannot hold steady a spoonful of yeast. Anyways, 3 grams or 0.1 ounces of salt. 42 grams or 1.5 ounces of unsalted butter one whole egg and one egg yolk. Three tablespoons of orange blossom water, one tablespoon of fennel seeds, and one tablespoon of anise seeds. With this Moroccan brioche, every bite will have a little explosion of fennel and anise seeds, all with the fresh aroma of orange blossom water. In a stand mixer bowl, start by adding all your dry ingredients and give them a little whisk. With the machine running on low speed, add your orange blossom water, then the egg mix, then slowly add the milk. And finally add the butter. Make sure the butter is melted, but not hot, otherwise it might damage the yeast. Now turn up the speed to medium and run it for 10 minutes. Toward the end, the dough will absorb all the moisture and the result should be a very sticky, but very elastic dough. Now lightly grease your work surface, lay your dough, gently press down and stretch the dough, then fold in the sides and push the folds back into the dough. Now flip it and gently rotate it against the surface to create a beautiful smooth ball. Grease your ball and add the dough. And then grease the surface of the dough, cover with plastic and leave it in the oven with lights on for one and a half hours or until it doubles in size. Every house is different, every oven is different, so adjust your proof in time depending on what part of the year you're doing this, how hot is your kitchen and so forth. If you are slightly OCD like me, measure your dough and divvy it up into six equal parts. Take each part, stretch it and fold it in. Roll with the sides of your hand against the surface. Then once you have a nicely shaped ball, lay your hand gently on it and roll it against the surface clockwise if you are right-handed. If you are left-handed, you're on your own. Cover your oven tray with a parchment paper and then grease it. Make sure to leave some space between the dough balls because even though they're just dough balls, they need some space to grow. Cover them with another oven tray and let them rise on the counter for 45 minutes. 
again, proofing time depends on what time of the year you're doing this and how warm is your kitchen. So check on them every 15 minutes. Prepare an egg wash consistent of one whole egg and one tablespoon of whole milk. Preheat your oven to 180 Celsius or 360 Fahrenheit, top and bottom heat with fan. Then brush your buns. Sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on them. Cook for 17 minutes in total. Ovens have hot spots, so after seven minutes, I rotate my tray. With two minutes left, move the tray up so that they get that beautiful brown crust. Immediately after you take them off of the oven, put them in a wide rack and let them get to room temperature. And that's it, we're done. The buns are very bouncy, very soft. Crumb is light, it's airy, it's fluffy, faithful to its brioche heritage with a beautiful Moroccan aromatic twist. Eat it as is or with marmalade and enjoy. And that was it. They take some work, but they're totally worth it. I hope you make them at home. I'll leave you all the ingredients right below this video. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll see you next time. Take care.